What is up, YouTubes? We got Crimson Vow spoilers right around the corner, so let's talk about what we're all hoping shows up in the set. I mean, Midnight Hunt has been out for like an entire month, and we're bored of it. So let's talk about exciting things like our hopes and dreams for Crimson Vow, cards we want to see, characters I want to get new cards, and mechanics new and old I'm thinking will pop up. Let's get into it. Starting with what we know about Crimson Vow, it is a set focused on a vampire wedding. The Crimson Vow is about a wedding allegedly between Olivia Valderin and a suitor from the Markov bloodline. Olivia's plan is to take control over all of Innistrad. She's so sneaky, but she probably shouldn't have written her diabolic plans on the invitations. So with that covered, what am I hoping for? Number one, the thing I'm hoping for the most is that Edgar Markov gets a proper standard playable card. If you watch my videos, you know Edgar was my first ever EDH deck. Shout out to Tyler who traded him to me. Don't worry about the value of the card since we've traded. Everything is fine. But Edgar has been alluded to referenced in Midnight Hunt because Soren went looking for him and Edgar was absent for their meeting. Why is that? Well, obviously it's because he's running over to Crimson Vow land and getting ready to smash faces and pre-releases across the globe. I hope. I really really hope. But why is our first ever vampire on Innistrad, Edgar, out and about? Is it because he has competition now for Innistrad? Did he read the invitations from Olivia and is now wanting to make sure he can get control over Innistrad? I feel like we have an Anchorman level battle brewing. And that would mean we have more vampire bloodline leaders on the way as well. Another one I'd like to see would be Sengir. Sengir, the OG vampires in magic. Maybe we can get a nice standard playable either partner in crime or villain to go with or against Edgar. And it makes sense because Sengir was last seen in the lore of magic leading an army. But what were they doing or going to? We're not really sure. Heading to Crimson Vowland Land as well seems like a good plan to me. And because Midnight Hunt had a rather lackluster showing of vampires, I mean, we know this set's going to be far more vampire forward, but that would mean we need at least a third vampire bloodline leader. And my prediction is we get a new vampire lord who is not primarily black or red. I'd like to see what a primarily blue or white vampire looks like, and if there's a start to a new bloodline, well, maybe we could see something unique to it, but that is also vampire related. Or something that would be quite on the nose with the whole wedding theme is that we're going to have a new character introduced with the title Father of the Bride or Mother of the Groom. Even though Olivia is the progenitor of the Voldaren bloodline, that wouldn't make sense, but changing the lore is now the norm for magic, so anything is possible. I just really want more vampires in the set, and what better a reason do we need for more vampires than all these vampire army bloodlines meeting on the Innistrad battlefield to duke it out. Okay, any other characters I'm hoping for? Not really. All will be well as long as Edgar has a new card, but if you have one you're really hoping for, or lines up with what you think the lore is going to show us in this set, let me know in the comments. Now let's move on to the mechanics I'm hoping or expecting to return, as well as my ideas for some new mechanics. In Midnight Hunt, we saw reprints of cards and mechanics from throughout our other trips to Innistrad, and with the set being independent, but also linked to Midnight Hunt, I expect we'll still have more of the same with double-faced cards, the flashback mechanic, curses, the day-night mechanic, and the coven mechanic. Themes I'm expecting in the set are the same tribes we're used to, with vampires having the most creature cards, humans having the second most, and then werewolves still being quite present with the third most common creature type in the set. I think there'll be a new tribal theme attack focused mechanic that we're going to call Blood Tithe, which is an old card from Core Set 2011, but Blood Tithe, not being an Innistrad specific card, still has references to this set. The flavor text reads The Crimson Throne may be empty, but its coffers are full. And then the card, when you actually play it, says each opponent loses three life and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. And I think that could line up with what's going on in the set as well as what this new mechanic could do. Something along the lines of when a creature you control with Blood Tithe deals combat damage to a player, each opponent loses one life and you gain life equal to the amount of life lost this way. Something that just incentivizes combat, life loss, gaining, happening, feels good to me. It'll be great in this set too because I'm also hoping that we have vampire tokens and that the tokens can have blood tithe or that you can give other vampires this mechanic and just help add to that synergy within the tribe. And I guess with that, I think tokens will be quite popular in the set too because if we're assuming we're going to have a ton of creatures with this wedding going on and duels happening, a great way to create a lot of creatures is with cheap tokens. So expect a lot of tokens in the set. Another new mechanic, um, Hoping for is one that is quite wedding-esque, and it is called Send-Off, and it will revolve around creatures leaving the battlefield 
and there being a benefit to the person losing those creatures. It may be doing damage or causing loss of life, or it may be similar to the coven mechanic, where the prerequisite for the ability is the same for everything, but the triggered or activated effect is unique to each creature with send-off. I'd also like to see an ability that says when you have one or more creatures leave the battlefield due to combat damage as a different way to involve the outcome of combat in your game plan. Now moving into the specific cards beyond the creatures I'm hoping for and the mechanics I'm thinking of, I really just hope that there's a legendary artifact card that is called Blood Diamond, which will be the wedding ring, of course, and it should have some innuendo to Leonardo DiCaprio, who will also be the star of the next secret layer, I'm sure. No, just me. Okay. I'm also assuming there's going to be another cycle of mythic rare creatures. I think they're going to have some name linked to the wedding as well. So I think there's going to be a mythic rare cycle where every creature is either described as usher, officiant, or candle lighter. And I like candle lighter because it's this role that's popular in Christian wedding services, but also a motif utilized in the design of Innistrad. So I could see it being quite fitting here, creeping into creature names like we saw with the adversaries from Midnight Hunt. Do you have any unique card ideas that you're hoping show up in the set? Again, let me know in the comments. All right, and to wrap this up, I'll just name the cards I hope get reprinted, but I'm not looking at this through the lens of limited or standard or any constructed format. I'm looking at it through the lens of what is going to happen in this set. And if we look at Midnight Hunt, the abbreviation for the set is mid. The abbreviation for Crimson Vow is vow. So mid vow, something crazy is going to happen. What is that something crazy? Murder. How is it going to happen? With a shard of broken glass, and then everyone who's there witnessing this madness is going to have the look of frightful delusion on their face. I mean, look at that. It's traumatizing. That's my crazy conspiracy theory that it's been in plain sight the whole time. Olivia should have seen it coming. We all should have seen it coming, but now you know. Don't be surprised when you find out the crazy plot twist that's happening. I don't know if we've ever seen something like this before in a famous-ish kind of franchise, but... No, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine. And I would say that'd probably be the worst thing that could happen, but maybe... No, actually, I think the worst thing that could happen is Snapcaster Mage gets reprinted, and then everyone just keeps recasting All Runs Epiphany every game forever until it rotates out or gets banned. But that's it for me, folks. Let me know what you're hoping for in the comments, and subscribe for more content like this, including reviewing the spoilers for Crimson Vow, which are right around the corner. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, my friends, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.